Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to outline text in GIMP 2.10. Okay, let's go ahead and open up the web browser quickly. And I'm just going to download this image. Make sure you've got the latest version of GIMP installed. If you don't have that, then I will put a link in the YouTube description showing you how to install GIMP. I want to download this picture, so I'm going to click free download. And we're just going to download this one image and we'll open up this folder and we'll drag and drop that picture into this folder here. Okay, let's go ahead and close down the web browser and we'll go ahead and open up GIMP software. And we wanna create a blank document. So let's go to File, New. And we're gonna set the width to 1920, the height to 1080, and we'll click Advanced Options and set the resolution here to 72. Because we're gonna do this for, not for print, maybe for web work, let's say, for example. Let's click on fill with here and we're going to set it to transparency. Okay, so we want to import that image we just downloaded. Let's just click here and make sure that we've got the move tool selected, right? So hold down the left mouse button, click move. So that's our default tool to select. And we'll open up this folder here and drag and drop that picture into GIMP here. Let's drag and drop the picture. I'm going to hold down the control key and use the mouse wheel to zoom out. So hold down your control key and move downwards on your mouse, uh, mouse wheel so that you can zoom out like this, yeah? And we want to re really we want to rotate it and resize it because you can see it's a vertical image and we want it to be in landscape. So we should rotate it first and then we can resize it. Let's do it that way. So let's go ahead and press Shift and R. Shift, make sure this top uh, layer is selected and press Shift and R. And that will allow us to get the rotation tool. You can just type in here minus 90 or you can click in the top left hand corner and start to drag down holding down the left mouse button. Hold down the shift key and that will move it in increments and we're going to rotate it around in this sort of angle. And just to, um, just to help you a little bit, there's also this tool here called opacity. So you can set the opacity here for the preview just to see what the rotation looks like in the canvas in the background right so we're going to rotate it around this way and then click the rotate button it's set to minus 90 here now we've rotated it we want to resize it so we can just press shift and s to scale or we can go to uh let's see we can left click here and click here scale can you see shift and s so i just prefer to use the shortcut keys shift s and you can see we can't see the canvas in the background. So again, we're going to set the opacity to about 50%. And now we can see the checkered box in the background. So when we click on this handle and drag it in, we don't go too far. We don't want to go too far. We want to just have it just on the outside edge and then click scale again. And now you can see the image is nicely scaled for the canvas. Okay, let's go ahead and zoom back in on this image and we'll hold down the control key and use our mouse wheel to zoom in. And sometimes when you zoom in, you can see the pictures off the screen. We'll hold down the middle mouse button, hold down the middle mouse button, and then you can drag the canvas around, right? The middle mouse is your mouse wheel. So we'll drag it to around this position here. Now we wanna create some text. So let's go ahead and click on the text tool. And when we click on this text tool, you can click here and choose any sort of font that you like, right? You can pick from any fonts that are installed on your computer. I'm going to use this one called ABZ, something like that, what it was called. And we'll go ahead and click on the canvas here. And I'm going to type in capital letters outline. And you can type anything you like. You can type your name, for example, or anything that you want. I'm going to press Shift and A. And you can click inside this box here. And you can pick a color so you might want to pick red for example and then click ok and now your text is red remember to press shift and a or sorry control a not shift a control a and that will select the text or you can hold down the left mouse button and select the text this way as well we want to make this text bigger so i'm going to hold down on this up arrow here and set it to around let's say 310 that seems to be a nice in fact let's make it a bit smaller it's a little bit too big let's set it to around 280 pixels and I actually want this text to be kind of um, uh, a similar color to the background but not exactly the same so I'm going to click back on the color tool and click on this uh, option here the eyedropper tool and I want to pick like a color that is you know off of this uh, this artwork in the background or this this sort of material I'm going to pick something like this and that's kind of be the default color and click OK. And you can kind of see the text. You can't really read it now, but we're going to put an outline around it so that it's more legible. So this is kind of the idea. Let's click on the move tool or the, yeah, the move tool here. And we want to put this text exactly in the center of this image. The way that we do that is we hold down the left mouse button and click on the alignment tool here or press Q. We'll click on the alignment tool and this is relative to the image. This is the image and we're going to re we want to reposition it relatively to this canvas size here, right? Let's just move this into the center. And most people will click on the move tool 
and then all of a sudden start clicking on these things and they're not working right why they're not working even if you click on outline here and you click on them they don't work the reason why is you need to actually select the image or the or the text or the graphic or whatever it is inside of the canvas you can even see a little hand here so we can click anywhere on this object and you see these little white handles will appear in the corner now it's been selected now we can click on the tool to center it out on the screen so remember you have to click on the object then use the centering or the relative um, alignment tools here okay um, now let's go back and select our move tool and the next thing we want to do is really duplicate this layer so let's go ahead and click on this outline text here and we'll click on this tool here and it says duplicate right down here so we click it and it's going to duplicate so we've got two layers sitting exactly on top of each other the top one i want to hide it so i'm just going to hide this top one and click on this one that's sitting right below it and i'm going to right click and do alpha to selection this basically allows us to select the text around the edging right anything that is transparent is going to do a selection around it yeah like this and then we're going to go to select and we're going to go to grow here grow and we're going to grow our selection you can type in any number here for this particular piece of text i think 10 is a, a good number you can make it a bit bigger a bit smaller it really depends on the text right you have to be a bit careful you don't want to do a, too much of a selection or the, or the outline is going to start to join to the next text and you can't understand that when we move forward let's go ahead and click ok and now we can see there's a little bit of an extra gap around the edge of this selection now what we want to do is fill that selection so there's different ways you can fill it with different sort of styles but for now let's just do something really basic let's click on this top, top tool here uh, let's see in fact click on the top swatch here and we'll select the black color and we'll click OK and then we'll go to our paint bucket tool so hold down the left mouse button here and select bucket fill and we'll go ahead and click on this text in fact we need to set it to uh, foreground here foreground color yeah? this option here because this is the foreground swatch and we can click on the text and we can fill it in here like this we want to just fill it in let's just undo that really what we want to do is uh, click on foreground here and we want to click on the outside edge here right let's just uh, zoom in a little bit here so we want to click on the like on the blank space around here and that will fill in all of the text here you can see now it's all filled in black and we can now turn on the top layer and now we've got an outline around our text all right nice and simple so let's undo that and click back on this text it's still selected but let's just say um, as an example let's just say we, we we enable this text like this yeah and we go to select and none so we're going to remove the selection so now we want to save this work let's just save this as our first version let's go to file save as and let's go to my desktop and let's go to uh, where is this desktop where is this gone here it is and let's just call this um, outline right let's just call it outline dash zero one file we're going to save it as a gimp file and then let's just go and export it as a jpeg so we're going to do a couple of different versions so let's do export as and we'll click here and we'll go to jpeg and we'll call it outline jpeg one that's fine and we'll just export it and save it as 90% uh, compression click export so we've got this first version done right and now we want to change um, the style of the outline in the background so there's a couple of ways to do it the smart thing to do is really call this outline uh, let's call it outline black right because that's what it was if we hide this top layer we can see it's just a black filled text here so what we can do now is take this layer right click on it and duplicate it and now we've got another version called outline black we can hide this bottom one because we're not going to use that for the moment and we can just we'll label this correctly after we've done the out the fill for it Let's hide this top layer click on this one and then we can go to our gradient tool here let's click gradient and right now is i've got this um black to pink color right i've got black foreground and then i've got this pink sort of color in the background i'm going to click on this top swatch the top one and i'm going to click on the picker tool and i'm going to pick a different color i don't really want black i want something that's kind of like a dark sort of color light right from this canvas a very dark color or this image in the background we we'll click OK now we can see the difference in the colors and we're going to go to the uh, gradient tool and we're going to do um, foreground to background right RGB here this one we'll click it and then what we'll do is we want to make a selection again on this text so we'll click it and we'll right click and we'll do alpha to selection again and now we've got the text selected and we can hold down the shift key uh, let's see hold down the control key 
and you just drag up and we can fill in this text in this sort of gradient now right but this is our background remember not the foreground this is the background text now if we enable the foreground we've got this nice sort of gradient around our text which, which is a bit more creative let's say right um, let's go to select none and now we've got this nice sort of outline text like this and we can go to file save and the reason why we kept the original black outline let's just call this uh, let's just rename it's always worth renaming your layers when you're doing many layers let's just call this grad for gradient we can hide this layer and enable this one right and we can just switch between them because we've got them as independent layers so let's enable this top one let's go to file save file export as and we'll export this as version 2 of the jpeg file so we've got two versions now okay and we we'll just export this and let's click on this gradient one and we're going to right click and duplicate it one more time and then we'll hide this one and we'll click on this one and we'll hide the top layer because that's kind of masking our text below uh, below it and we'll click on this layer here we'll right click and do alpha to selection now we've got a new selection and we can fill it with something else right so we can go back to our bucket tool and we've got patterns here and we can click on the pattern tool and then we can find something that we think might work well uh, you've got all these different patterns you can create your own patterns as well um, you can just click here right so you can click on the pattern tool here to see them a bit more clearly and let's say we let's try and use something like um, this this uh, pattern here it's called animal right so we'll click on it and we'll hold down the shift key and in fact we just need to uh, left click inside here we don't have to hold down the shift key we're just going to left click inside each one of the text elements and then we can enable our top layer and now we've got this sort of uh, cheetah pattern right so let's just call this one uh, let's just label it animal right some sort of animal print you could reverse that logic you could go and fill the the um the text layer with that pattern and then do something else but for now we'll just do it this way and we've got the outline here of the animal text pattern and we just do to select and we want to select none right so we deselecting the object let's go to file save file export as and we'll save this as version 3 and now you've got kind of a, an understanding of how to do these outlines and you can grow and shrink your selection as well so you could in theory hide this layer you could go back onto the black one right click and duplicate it duplicate it let's drag that all the way up to the second layer here we'll enable it and hide this top layer select this text right click on it and then do alpha to selection and then you could go and go edit or go to uh, let's go to select and grow the selection and we're going to grow it by another let's say five pixels and then click OK and then we're going to go hold down the control key and zoom right in and let's um, let's um, let's go to foreground fill and we will select a different color let's select uh, black for now and click in fact we'll select um, let's select something like a peachy sort of red color click OK and what we will do let's just zoom right in here we'll click on this um, selection here but you can see how it's the text is kind of sitting together now this t you might want it like that right um but what we can do now is enable the top layer but when you grow your selection too much can you see how it's kind of joined here the text and we don't really we don't really want that right so i'm just trying to under show you that if you grow your selection too much you're going to get this sort of join between the text which you may or may not want you may want that you may want these two objects to kind of sit together so really we should grow the selection if you wanted the l's uh, the U and the T and the L and this I to kind of sit together, join together, then um, we would need to grow the selection a little bit more. So let's go ahead and press Control Z or Control Z if you're in America. Uh, let's just do Control Z and then Control Z one more time and do it one more time. And then we're back to our original state where we made the first selection here. We can go to Select and then Grow Selection. And instead of growing it by five, let's grow it to maybe, uh, let's do something like, eight I think will be okay eight and it's going to be a, a slightly bigger selection and then we can fill it in uh, let's just go here and click fill fill in all of the selection and then enable the top layer and now you can see that these elements are joined together these letterings so let's go ahead and do select none 
here and then go to file export as and we'll make this kind of version 4 uh, let's type in version 4 here and then click export and then just press control uh, let's get this export window open export here and press control s to save control and w will close the window and let's minimize this and now we've got all these different versions right let's see we've got this one just plain black then we've got this one this is the one i kind of like the most i kind of like the the, the the coloration here you've got this leopard one and then you've got this outline one here we had a bit of a problem here on the selection can you see like the, the, this uh, this selection didn't do quite right so maybe we'll look at that in a future tutorial showing you how to fix something like this but just don't grow your selection too much if you grow it too much you might have this sort of problem here on the side here but the other ones came out pretty well right the black one's nice and simple but out of all of them i kind of like this gradient one i think this one looks the best uh based on the colors you can still read the text but if you were not to have that outline then the text would be quite difficult to read let's go ahead and close this and close this that's the end of this tutorial i hope you find it useful that's how you go about outlining text in gimp 2.10 and i look forward to seeing you in the next dcp web tutorial